In today's story joke, we wonder what happens when a general visits the troops in a war. But lest first delve into the First World War, or as it was called, the Great War, a farce of epic proportions, with slightly less death. Ah, the First World War, a time of glorious mustaches, trench foot chic, and absolutely no idea what the other guys were even doing over there. Buckle up, history buffs, because we're about to take a whirlwind tour through this war that was basically a giant game of confused hopscotch with deadly consequences, mostly for the poor pigeons. It all started in 1914, when Archduke Ferdinand of Austria, a man whose hobbies included collecting novelty thimbles and accidentally starting world wars, got assassinated. Now, you'd think royalty would have better security than a grocery store parking lot at 2 a.m., but apparently, all it took was one overly enthusiastic Serbian teenager with a bad aim and a worse sense of humor to set off a chain reaction more explosive than a room full of teenagers and their first chemistry sets. Countries started declaring war on each other faster than you could say, Kaiser Bill needs a new hat. Alliances, those flimsy friendship bracelets of the political world, were yanked this way and that. Germany, fresh off a successful yodeling competition win, decided to invade Belgium because, well, honestly, nobody's entirely sure why. Maybe they were just hangry? Meanwhile, Britain, ever the gentleman, except when they were stealing land like it was a particularly shiny teacup, declared war on Germany because, you know, when your buddy Belgium gets trampled, you offer moral support and maybe a cuppa. France naturally joined the fray because, well, France and Germany have a long and storied history of friendly disagreements that usually involved a lot of shouting and the occasional flung baguette. Now picture this. Millions of young men, most of whom couldn't tell the difference between a map and a napkin, are shipped off to fight in a war nobody really understands. They're armed with itchy wool uniforms, rifles that backfired often, and a healthy dose of jolly good cheer, or in the case of the Germans, a fervent belief in the power of sauerkraut. The trenches, those delightful mud moats of misery, became the soldier's new home. Imagine a giant muddy ditch filled with bored men, perpetually damp socks, and enough rats to make even the most hardened New Yorker flinch. Communication between the sides was interesting. Since yelling across a muddy battlefield wasn't exactly conducive to polite conversation, the soldiers resorted to more creative methods. There was the ever-popular launch a cow with a message strapped to its tail technique, surprisingly effective but messy, and the classic write a passive-aggressive note and tie it to a pigeon's leg. Less messy, but pigeons have terrible aim. Battles were a chaotic ballet of misplaced enthusiasm and questionable tactics. One particularly memorable encounter involved a British battalion bravely charging a German trench, only to discover it was completely empty. The Germans, it turned out, had staged a fake retreat, leaving behind a single, very bored private with a gramophone playing a jaunty polka tune. The British, thoroughly confused but strangely invigorated by the polka, ended up having a tea party with the bewildered German soldier. Of course, there were moments of true heroism and sacrifice. But let's be honest, war is mostly about mud, boredom, and a desperate search for anything remotely entertaining. Enter trench art, the ultimate expression of, I'm stuck in a ditch with nothing to do but sharpen rusty spoons. Helmets were transformed into ashtrays, shell casings became elaborate lighters, and soup cans morphed into surprisingly realistic portraits of Kaiser Wilhelm with a particularly impressive unibrow. The war dragged on for four long years, a testament to the sheer stubbornness of all involved. Finally, in 1918, with everyone utterly exhausted and sick of trench foot chic, the fighting stopped. The Treaty of Versailles was signed, a document so confusing and full of loopholes that it basically guaranteed a sequel WWI, anyone? The Great War, a conflict that began with a misplaced bullet and ended with a misplaced comma, left behind a legacy of destruction and a healthy dose of survivor's guilt. But hey, at least it gave you some fantastic trench art 
and a newfound appreciation for descent plumbing. And now that the history is clearly understood, the committee will be very much appreciated. So, take of your helmets of and get the popcorn ready. It's joke time. A general visit an army hospital to check on the conditions and inspire the troops. It's World War I, trench warfare is living hell, and the men could really use some inspiration. The general starts talking to the wounded soldiers. He goes up to the first man and says, what brings you in here, son? The soldier replies, sir, I got dysentery in the trenches, something awful. The general asks him, how are they caring for you in here? And the soldier replies, well, sir, every day the nurses put a cool cloth on my head and they clean my behind with a soft brush. The general asks, is there anything else we can do for you? And the soldier says, no, sir, the nurses are doing the best they can. The general seems satisfied, thanks him for his service and moves on to the next man. The general approaches the second man's bed and asks, what brings you in here, son? The soldier replies somewhat embarrassed, Sir, I got gonorrhea from a woman while I was on leave. The general laughs and says, It happens to the best of us, son. How are they caring for you in here? And the soldier replies, Well, sir, every day the nurses put a cool cloth on my head and they clean my privates with a soft brush. The general asks, Is there anything else we can do for you? And the soldier says, No, sir, the nurses are doing the best they can. The general once again seems satisfied, thanks him for his service and moves on to the next man. The general approaches the third man's bed and asks, What brings you in here, son? The soldier tells him, Sir, I got strep throat in the trenches. The general asks, How are they caring for you in here? And the soldier replies, Well, sir, every day the nurses put a cool cloth on my head and they clean my throat with a soft brush. The general asks, is there anything else we can do for you? Actually, sir, there is one thing, said the soldier. When they start with that brush in the morning, can I be the first to be treated? <laughs> if you liked our joke, then please watch our next joke by clicking here. <laughs>